Motion by Debbie, support by Bodley. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion approved. Approval of the minutes from the February 11th, 2013 regular board meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the approve the minutes from February 11th. Motion by Madby, support by Thayer. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion approved. Public comment. Ralph. Um, there's, I, I'm going to shorten this up for you guys and everything, but I know there's a few people here that, I guess if you guys would raise your hands if you're for a new softball fence. Um, we've needed one for quite a while. The fence is 30 plus years old. Uh, it's hard to see right now, but believe it or not, the softball rolls under it halfway down the thing. And it's, it's it really, we would appreciate you guys spending a whole bunch of money. I know it's a lot of money, but uh, it really could show off the town. The schools in support of it, I gave, I put a letter up there, Bill and Ken aren't here yet. Um, I know the sports boosters, I promise, if the sports boosters won't give enough money for the cap on the fence, and you'll allow me to hang some banners up or something on the fence, I'll sell enough to pay for the cap. And that way it'll look good. It can be something real strong for the community when people drive into town. Um, and, and it's really, it can be a great thing, and I really appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. Any other public comment? Yes. Uh, hi, my name is Brad Glasgow, and I'm the editor of the Central Lake News. And in the middle of February, I sent the council an email uh, through the website, and I wanted to run an article about the logging surplus. And uh, I asked a simple question. I asked, uh, what is the best way for... Uh, the public to let the council know their opinion. And uh, Mr. Cruzy responded and refused to comment. Uh, he said that we needed to establish ourselves in the eyes of the council before you guys talk to us. And I am not here to establish ourselves in the eyes of the council today. Uh, we've been a fixture in the community for uh, about a year now. Uh, we've had a Facebook group for a year and several of you on the council have been longtime members. Uh, you've even used our group to announce the creation of the Village Facebook page uh, after saying that we were not established. Now, the community has embraced our Facebook group and our newspaper. Uh, our group has 400 plus people in and around Central Lake who are concerned with Central Lake. And everyone in the community has been more than happy to grant us interviews, including the school superintendent, the president of the Chamber of Commerce, the Historical Society, as well as local businesses. So we feel we've been established. The reason I am here is to let you know that we will be contacting most, if not all of you, on the council for interviews in the future in order to keep the public informed. Uh, for example, I want to interview one or more of you about the Thurston Park proposed changes to see what's, uh, what changes are in store for the park. And we'd like to know who is our contact when we'd like to request interviews. Should we go through the communications committee or should we contact the relevant committee directly? How should we handle it? If you could let us know, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so we'll move along. Police report. Okay, I'll stand up here so I can. Hopefully, everybody had a chance to look at the report. Um, things are picking up for us. Um, it's kind of a good thing. And usually, February. End of January, early February is a slow time for us, so it's starting to pick up with the weather getting better, people moving around. Um, report, I'll hit a couple of highlights. Um, obviously, Josh is here, and I, I brought Josh today. Um, Josh Jones, um, some of you may remember he worked here when I first started here. Went to work for the county. Um, still works for the county, but is coming back about one or two days a week just to kind of help us out and fill in. Um, I explained to you guys last week the benefit of that is to kind of hit the floor running. Um, the education, the training, the experience, everything's there. So um, Josh started last week and got pretty much most of everything he needs and ready to go. So you'll see him a lot more in the next coming weeks. So, um, well, besides that, um, did some training um, and just uh, we finalized, um, Ken and I spent some time this last week um, finalizing the, the peddler ordinance, which you guys will have a copy and we 
um, kind of brainstorm some things about um, forms and applications and stuff like that so we can kind of keep track of who's coming and going and stuff like that. Most of it went to Brian and came back already, so I think we're ready to go on that. So, <coughs> Any other questions? Thank you. DPW. Uh, everybody has a copy of DPW operations, I hope. Number two is the biggest thing on there was the uh, 94 plus truck with the differential went out, which is basically the rear end of the truck, and we replaced it in house. I'd never done it, but talked a couple of the council members. They kind of talked me through how to do it, so they talked me into trying it. We did it. It is repaired up and running. We've got all the snow piles hauled from town, and overtime is 40 hours in this report. Last report had part of February in it, so this pretty much closes up the snow months for the overtime. Any questions? Thank you. Correspondence. I have some correspondence. I don't know. Money, money. We'll take care of that later when we talk about it. The, money. the other two correspondents I have, one of them was from a gentleman in Texas who was inquiring about who the barbecue, fundraiser type event competition in the village. We're just going to pass it along to the chamber, and the chamber can deal with that and come back to us, because that's true chamber matter. The other one I talked to Sam about this was about the maintenance of the alley behind Bachman's, and Sam can help me if I'm wrong, but the village does their best to maintain that alley. It, it, it's an alley. People park in it. When they park in it, we can't follow. So if, 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 if those business owners want to get in the battle of who's going to park there, who isn't, and are we going to restrict parking so it can be followed, mm -hmm. are they going to maintain it themselves, that's fine and they can come back to us. But, but right now, we do the best job we can do with the alley used the way it is. So I think those business owners need to get together and come to an agreement. So I think that addresses that. Because we really do Try our best. You can't follow the street with cars parked on it. <laughs> you know, there's no room to get through it. So we know it, and we'll work on it. That's all I have. Any other? Committee report. Street. Rob. Um, currently, we've got traditional metal halide lights, 34 of them. Um, our budget to maintain those lights is $20,000. We're trying to lower that number by switching over to LED lights. Um, we're working with a company right now to see um, which is the best route to go. Um, there is a higher upfront cost, but overall, we can lower our wattage per bulb, thus saving money, and also at the same time become eligible for Consumer Powers Grant. So that's what Sam and I are working on currently, trying to move that forward. <coughs> Any questions for Rob? What's Rob? Rob, I think we're in the water. Sam just uh, submitted the DAQ report and and the cross connection report. The usage was up five, a little over five million gallons from 2012 to 2011. With of course June, July, and August being the pretty hot ones. There's not a water. And other than that, there was he rebuilt two sewer pumps, residential sewer pumps, and other than that, that's about it. This was the big thing. Thank you. I've got extra reports today. Bill, welcome. Uh, just welcome uh, Josh to our back. Our Thank you. And I'm sure he's a great addition to our police force. Um, that's about it. I think Chief covered about everything else. Thank you, Bill. Communication, um, The only thing is, I had some questions about the Facebook page, which I think Joe is able to help me with, and we got to I think I'm good there, so um, that's, that's it. Thank you. i jump in there for a minute with it. Uh, as a lot of people know, we approved going forward with the Facebook page in February. Missions Computers worked with us pretty diligently in getting that going. Um, we put it out, uh, published it on the 3rd. Uh, we've asked that there not be any questions on the Facebook page. We've asked that it be limited to comments. If you have questions, you can uh, get a hold of us through our email or by the messenger on that. Um, other than that, on the, the uh, communication side, we're pretty good. We've got most of our reports, as Mr. Thayer 
uh, just reported on the DEQ water usage is on there now. Um, we've updated the budget on there and, and many other things with it. So. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, again, I actually think it went real good with it. We closed pretty well closed out the year until we get our adjuster journal entries. We can't close the books, but Pat worked really hard at, at getting our final revenue and expenditure together for us. We looked really good. Every one of our accounts came out uh, in the black except for one in the equipment fund, but that's just a minor numbers game that we've got to play in. Pat's working with our uh, uh, auditors there to correct that. So other than that, we should be looking pretty good, I think. Any questions? Thank you, Joe. Leela, Mark. Okay, we have been working. We've had uh, men down there helping us. Uh, Joe and Rob have been doing a wonderful job helping me. We are planning on redoing the bathrooms in the park itself, not the up by the to, uh, yeah, the building. We're not going up there. We're doing the one down in the park where the reservations are. It needs to be redone. We need to have some new showers put in down there also. And we're working on that. And we're working also on, we are going to raise the price of renting. It's hard, hard to say, but we haven't done it for years. So now we do have to raise it. And it will be only because we need to, to offset the expenses we're going to be having this year bringing our park up to where it's going to be a feasible place for families to be there with their children. And as far as the uh, ballpark, I think we're going to hold that until later on because that's part of our deal. Okay? Anything else? No. Thank you. <coughs> President's report. Like Lisa said, in the park, I don't know if you all know, but the village has applied for a grant to put in more mm -hmm. docking down in the campsite area and to redo the bathroom. So that's in the works. That's all I can tell you. It's been submitted. I couldn't even tell you a dollar amount because the engineers haven't came back with it yet. But they know the plan, the rec plan's been submitted. The grant will be in April 1st. And we'll just keep up to date on what's happening with that. The, just so the council knows, our revenue and taxes is $8,000 down this year. So we looked at it. We'll absorb it. It's, it is what it is. It's $8,000 less. In 101, it's $2,200 less in local streets, which definitely will absorb it. It's $550 in the water. So we now know that amount. Um, a few other things I, I, I just I want to address. There, there's been some talk around town about our police department being eliminated. I, want, I just want every one of you to know nothing has changed. The, the budget amount is there. We, we've replaced our, our officer. Nothing's changed, so it, it, it's all stories you're hearing. Our police department is just what it was last year. It's on good track. So I, I don't know where those stories came from, but don't believe them. The other thing is there, there have been comments to village council trustees, and just so we all know it, that to release information. They, and, and it's all foilable information, I agree, but I think it's bad protocol for people to approach a trustee wanting them to give information about the village. So the policy is, it is what it is. Village information is released through the village office. It's not there's anything to hide, but I don't think it's fair to put Rob or Rod or anybody on the spot and say, would you please give me this? That's not their duty as a trustee. So we just ask that everything goes through the village office. I think that's pretty simple. We also ask that there's also been people contacting businesses that we do business with, wanting them to, to give them things about what's going on between the village and them. I think that's incredibly wrong. If you have a question to the village, bring it to the village. You know, just bring it to Pat, call me. We'll answer them, but take them where they belong. Um, there's talk about the house that was burned downtown. There's a lot of talk about the village making it into a parking lot. That's never been village <coughs> owned property that I know of. It, it's, it's not village property. There's never been any talk about buying it as village property or putting a parking lot on it. So once again, it's just as it was privately owned. It was foreclosed on by a bank. The, the house was burned down, but it has absolutely nothing to do with the village and the parking lot. So now you know what that is. And other than that, things have been nice and quiet. 
accept a motion for approval of the bills. Prepay the amount of four fifty six ninety two. Payroll in the amount of five thousand sixteen dollars and eighty nine cents. Payables in the amount of fifteen thousand five hundred fifty six and eleven cents. For a total approved amount of twenty one thousand twenty nine dollars and ninety two cents. I make a motion to approve the bills as presented. Good Motion by Chapman, support by Park. <coughs> Any discussion? Pat, roll call. Bethany. Yes. Bodley. Yes. Chapman. Yes. Clark. Yes. Thayer. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Cruising. Yes. Motion passed. Is there any new business? Any, I have none. No. I'm not going to address under action items. Action items. Logging. Uh, what we will do with the $14,000 we received on the logging project. So I will, I will read you the correspondence <coughs> I've gotten. If anybody has any more, please let me know, but I don't think there is. Of course, Ralph spoke on, on the ballpark. That's up to the ball line. So we know that idea is there. Another suggestion is to invest it in the safety of the village residents. Many times a day I see people speeding through downtown. I know that the police department can't be everywhere at once. My suggestion is to purchase a speed trap machine, those machines that sit on the edge of the road and show you how fast you are going. This might help to slow things down. Alternatively, I would suggest a traffic study and the possibility of installing a traffic light at the four corners. Regardless, traffic is moving much faster than 25 miles per hour through the downtown area. Thank you. So that's, that's one of them. Another one was wondering if village public restrooms downtown Central Lake could be considered for use of our logging line. I'd like you to consider the softball field fence and possibility of installing public restrooms uptown near the majority of the business locations. I'd like to see a beach put in at Thurston Park, a real beach in a safer section of the waterfront. We all know that currents are crazy right next to the bridge, and the lack of a real beach leaves the summer campers and visitors wanting more, so they choose to go to Barnes Park or to Torch Day Park to play. In regards to the logging money, suggestion for use. Extending the sidewalk past the corner store, around the bend, and down the road to the village limit site. Many people walk the side of the road in this area. It would be great if they, we, had a sidewalk to provide safe foot travel. Here's a letter from Quinberry Central Lake Athletic Director. Thank you for the opportunity to correspond with the council on behalf of Central Lake Athletics. I was excited to learn that the Village Council is looking at the potential of replacing the existing softball fence. I was thrilled to hear of the possible renovation. I would like to be the first to recognize the long-standing relationship of generosity the Village has shown Central Lake Public Schools. We have been honored to use the Ron Donaldson Field for over 30 years. We recognize the benefit to the athletic program as well as the physical education, physical education program. Since the field has been such an asset, I would like to encourage the Council to consider renovating the fence. The field's use for regular season contests and state tournament games will be improved with a new fence. The Central Lake Boosters Club is considering aiding the softball program in purchasing fence caps if the project is approved by the council. We are excited to work with the council to keep the Ron Donaldson field one of the nicest in northern Michigan. So, that's what I have. So, is there any <coughs> discussion? I, I would like to say that it, it's $14,000. I think that eliminates quite a few of these public restrooms that cannot, cannot happen for that amount of money. Um, a beach at Thurston Park just, just can't happen by DEQs. I mean, it, it just, it's a great idea. We'd probably all love to see a beach down there, but we're, we can't just go take sand and create a beach and dump it in the water. The sidewalk out past the corner store, once again, is way over that budget, I'm sure. We'd be cutting down trees, we'd be excavating. There's not replacing a sidewalk. There is no existing sidewalk there at all. And basically no room for one right now with a lot of You'd work. have to bring fill. You'd have to take into consideration everybody's driveway you go through, raising over. And, and Scott assures me he is dealing with downtown track, correct? The best we can. Yes. The best we can. So not, not that they're not all good ideas, but they're I think Scott's going to pay a little more attention to that and see if there's a problem there. 
the PIMS project is 11-3 on this? Yeah, but we have three, three beds in front of you. There's, there's another one in there, two beds in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It corresponded with six companies on fences where you got that. And within this project too, I don't think it does. Fence that's up there now along the sidewalk would come out and not be replaced. We would create true, how would you all see it? would be a true, true ball diamond fencing. The fence along the sidewalks is in such bad shape that it will look better with it gone. <coughs> I think we should consider the, the fence project then. And I think it's overwhelming support compared to just the email, a couple of emails that we mm -hmm. received. Benefit just, just, just as many or more people as, as any of the other projects, which all seem like pretty good projects. Yeah, I, I personally don't know much more you can do with that money that makes such an impact in our community. Mm -hmm. I'm the school, they use it. It's, it's, it's not just a school. We have youth leagues up here that come in and use it. How nice is that to, to show the young kids that we care? You know, that's that's the biggest thing that got me excited. I know. I know for probably six, seven years I've been on the council. I hate to say, but we've all talked about it being a nice one. We should do something with it. Now we have that opportunity to do something with it. Wouldn't that also bring other leagues in here together? Um, the other league thing. Traditionally, is a nighttime thing, and we don't have lights, and lights would be expensive. And uh, I'm not saying somebody couldn't. You know, we've we've in the past we've had some softball tournaments there, like pitching machine tournaments and stuff. And the community probably gets as many people come to our softball field as anywhere else in town. I mean, yeah, July 4th, the town is packed with people for the fireworks. That's one day. The softball field has people coming from the first game in April all the way through you know, almost August, where people from other parts of our area and out of the area are coming. The, the better show we make there, the more more chance we have somebody coming, spending the extra five bucks at the park. I agree. Yeah. That'd be good. I think we've got community support too to help <coughs> removal of the fence, right? Yeah. Um, I will we'll put our work there. and I'll bring up my I'll bring up my loader, my lift. We can pull fence posts. We'll we'll help in any way we can to keep the cost down. Um, I know we can get uh, enough people to help tear the fence down and make it everything as efficient so the village workers aren't overwhelmed. I know those guys are going to help too, but um, I think we can make it happen real fast and uh, we'll do anything we can to help the fence. It's also, been, <laughs> it's also been requested that you can help me with this, Scott, that we save the old fencing so we'll get a use out of that at the other ball field, correct? Oh uh, yeah, it was just something that uh, Mac and I talked about last year. Was um, uh, you know not asking for money, just uh, we were looking at possibly building a, a batting cage down by the uh, sports complex. Um, but with the fence, the old fence, we could use that to hang it up on the side and on the top, just like it is at the softball field. So would it be possible for the athletic commission to help these boys help? Help. Help by tearing the fencing down. Well, oh, we're going to make it help. Be, <laughs> there'll be, there'll be, uh, <laughs> if you don't want to help, there'll be help. I want to help you we'll talk about we'll that. We'll have lots of, we'll have, I don't know if I get the, 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 the boyfriends from the girls on the softball team will be there. <laughs> <laughs> the girls can do just as much as yeah, the boys. They, they'll be there. I, I, I promise. The boys sitting there watching. <laughs> they'll be there. I'm going to watch the girls. event. We're taking some girls. Have you looked at the, the different bids and see which one would you? I have. I looked at all three of them. Maybe a recommendation of one over the others? Oh, I have no recommendation on that. But what I would like to say on the old fence, we planned on salvaging the old fence, and we had purpose for it. That was for out here? Up at a well house up here, just so people are aware of that. If we don't you use all, all of that, that up that's there? fine, but I can't tell you how many feet we're going to use. Okay. The, uh, 
one from Perfect Fence is 13275. It's quite a bit more. The other two are pretty much in line, 11974 and 11.3. Are they, is Perfect Fence planning to do more? Or? I don't see any. They all bid the same project. They all bid the same project from start to finish, 10 foot on center, cement the balls, uh, main gauge wire. Not any heavier fencing. Uh, I, they all went by specs that I wrote out right here. No, you, you might not have seen them. Right? Not a lot more by specs. Sam, you say they, they are all 10 foot on center posts? All, all posts are 10 foot on center. All top rails are inch and five eighths, I believe all end caps are two inch or bigger, end posts. Uh, bottom wire, I think is nine gauge, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I have on the specs. Uh, I don't remember what gauge wire it was, I told everybody. Everybody got the same piece of paper. It's all nine. From that fax. It's all nine. It's all nine gauge, yeah. Tosky's now. And the reason we went with the heavier fences so it doesn't bend in the future. It's all nine. To make it, yeah, so it stays on water. So there wouldn't, in your mind, there isn't any reason why we wouldn't take the lowest bid then? No. I know nothing about that. <laughs> Anybody else know more about it? <laughs> you know, I, I think there's, there might be a few questions to answer, but I mean, I, really, all in all, it's, it's here. You know, with the three bids that you have, I personally contacted Perfect Fence, uh, Grand Traverse Bay Fence, and Petoskey Fence, and I asked them all the same question. Have you ever done softball baseball fields? And they all said the same thing, yes. So, if you have any, we can go look at. They've got a list of them, a big arm list where you can go and look at them. They'll get did any so, of them say Central Lake Baseball Field? Oh. <laughs> Somebody worked out there that didn't work out good, and I should have thought of that before, but I don't know. Um, whoever did the fencing, like, what, about two years ago at the backstop and stuff, they probably got a sign on the thing, but uh, that would concern me because there are lots of problems with that, with that company. But I don't, I don't know which it was. I just thought of it as you, you know, it never occurred to me before to mention it. But. Well, here's my thought. I, I would love to see us approve it if we do not to exceed like twelve thousand dollars because as we're sitting there now we, we we have questions. I mean has anybody asked Grand Travers or Petoskey, can you do it by end within our time frame by that day? I mean because we do have a time frame. But I'm just right. saying they're so close. If we approve it not to exceed twelve thousand dollars, we have the next week or so to ask these questions. We don't have to wait till next month to come back and say, wow, Grand Travers can't get it done for two weeks. <coughs> right. You're eleven thousand three hundred dollar bid. I did ask Grand Travers Bay Fence okay. Company. If it can be done, the first ball game oh. is the 15th of April. Am I right, Ralph? Yep. And they said they will have it done before the first ball game. Oh, okay. They were the only ones that would commit to but they, but, but they, doing it by that. But time. they truly didn't. All I have is this. Well, I mean, this. That's what, you know, you've been on their own contracts before. What they're committed to is what we accept. That's what I'm saying. I, I, and I'm, I'm not saying they're not good or what's not good or what's not good. I'm just saying I think we should nail down things like date. And I don't think we want to have another month to do it. We want to move on. Yeah, well, we could, if we do it. We could, do that, we could approve an amount and then uh, yeah, leave the... I mean, I, I just feel more comfortable. Give us time to answer the questions because we obviously have some questions because we have them right here right now. Yes. But that's not my decision. It's just my opinion. No, I think that's a good suggestion. It's a good approve recommendation. It. I'll make it to motion. We it by Right. I don't know. I'd make that motion that we approve the twelve thousand dollars from the of the logging fund that money there to support fencing. Support by motion by Chapman, support by Thayer. Any more discussion? So now we voted it in. When are we gonna actually voted it in yet. Not, I'm so sorry. I do have a question though. Yes. So when are we going to have this? Now we've got the monies. What now is going to happen in terms of getting the fence up and running? 
because we don't want to wait another month. Are we going to have the Parks and Rec Committee sit down and look at it? I would between Parks and Rec and the Finance Committee. I mean, the Finance has been approved in my opinion, so Parks right. and Rec. I just think that we, you can do it tomorrow, the next day, it doesn't matter. But okay. We can answer the questions we have of concern. Well, like you said, I want a time frame as well. Yeah. Well, then I think we can do we that. Within the week, then, is that? We should put it in a motion that we, that we give the village president the authority to sign the contract for the, one of these, whichever one he decides on there. That's you can do the, do the leg work to find out what. I just got to explain to you how my leg work works. Yeah. It's like Parks yeah. and Rec Committee, tell me what you want. Well, <laughs> no, they, they, but no, that's fine. Yeah. You know, you, you know what questions you want to answer, and, and we agree with you on the questions too. You know, the time frame is important. <coughs> uh, That's your day one. Yeah. Maybe check that backstop and see that it, that it doesn't have a Grand Traverse fence standing on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that may be a concern then. But include that in the motion. Rob, you've worked pretty close with uh, yeah, I've Ralph on uh, going. Yeah. Forward with this yeah, again. me and Layla were on the Parks and Rec Committee. Yeah. Yeah. Denise, I know you've been hearing it out, but I know you've worked a lot of hours. Okay, there's been a motion by Chapman to approve the spending of a few, well, not to exceed $12,000 for a fencing project at the Ball Diamond. Support by Terry. Any further discussion? Pat, roll call. Saturday? Yes. Bradley? Yes. Chapman? Yes. Clark? Yes. Thayer? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Yes. All in favor? Motion passes. Thank you.
one copy specifically is going to be all of his services together. Um, for all the different contracts that we've got with Corey, uh, one would be a wireless network support, which is for the campground Wi-Fi area, at $11,000 initial setup for the year. Um, $1,100 for the year uh, initial setup um, with sequential years of $360. For the campground support itself, which would be the reservation system and IT for the computer, I believe it is, Corey, and that would be uh, $1,270 initial setup, $570 for sequential years. The technical support, which would include Scott's computer and Pat's um, two computers anyways, at $1,080, um, and sequential years also $1,080. Um, there's no overtime hours or whatever that's uh, as needed. It's, uh, Corey informing today that he has um, got in with a group that he can now do remote access IT, and um, he also is supporting remote, um, oh shoot, uh, moderating. Well, monitoring, but I just lost uh, virus scanning and um, Trojan horse and, and different things, correct? Malware. Um, that would all be part of our, our technical support <coughs> we went with Corey and, and his options there. And then we also have the website support, which is just basically helping us monitor, update. Um, there's still a lot of things in our, our website, and, which will be that is, that is uh, HTML um, writings. I, I don't have a lot of uh, experience in, so. I think going with that contract helps us out a lot. Um, so that, that would be that. If you guys any questions on the contracts themselves. This one we should probably discuss as we discuss the park reservation system. Right, that's the only one that, that only deals with the park the support contract. <coughs> Yeah, you know, Corey's guy. Yeah, Corey's going to do a nice little presentation of a of a uh, reservation system we're looking at doing, and that would include the support for that. Um, we are going to do that. Uh, <coughs> Yeah, the camp. No, the campground support. Why are we going to put it Yeah, that we're going to put on. Until we get the reservation system. Uh, the wireless network. Yes. Okay. So this one we This one is the one we wanted. We wanted. Yes, yeah. this one has been put off to the reservation system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we want to go we'll through one at any time. Yes. And approve it or not. That, okay. I think that's a, a great way to do it. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's um. Let's start with first the, the technical support for the Village of Central Lake, which would be the IT support for uh, Pat's office, uh, the clerk's office, and Scott there, um, which would be in the amount of $1,080 a year. Um, Pat, just a quick question for you. Do you use, use Corey quite often for technical support? I think there's a definite need for support in the area um, mm -hmm. and for when the clerk gets hung up. Scott, I know he uses Libby for a lot of stuff. He's real good with the computers. But. Well, the technical the support would apply to our police reports where we get other things. But it would be nice to have somebody that I could call up. I mean, we don't technically use anybody because. Honestly, we don't have anything in our budget currently for that because it would come out of the base budget. 
Libby does a lot of it. Well, kind of. you cut that in half, then it's got to be <laughs> Well, I mean, <laughs> I think there'd be something to say about the consistency and the fact that if there's anybody that could be new, then and I'm sure Corey could come in, or somebody like Corey could come in and say, these are things that you could be doing better and you know, catch us up to speed and stuff like that. So obviously a computer that runs efficient is a police department that runs efficient. So. Very nice. got I have a question. I'm looking at Tom. Tom shall receive 20% discount off of $60 an hour, which is $48 an hour, and that 12 months of service. I see that at the 576. Any additional time shall be billed at a reduced rate of $50 an hour. That's more expensive. It's not reduced. Maybe it's a typo. Which, which contract are you in there? Uh, These were gotten different times for different reasons. So we can consolidate that a little. Oh, okay. <coughs> oh, okay. That'll just come up in a minute. Then. So, so let me understand it. It's it's a yearly fee plus the hourly fee. No. Did that? Yeah. What he was talking to was a little different. Oh, I'm sorry. It's three different. We're talking about technical support. Yep. Technical support has no hours <coughs> rate, and there's yeah. no limit to hours. Okay. If there's an hour rate on it for projects, projects and upgrades, so that's all. Okay. 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 Support, support of, our, of the systems we have in place now. If we want to upgrade or add a new system, of course. I mean, it makes sense to me that there's going to be a cost for that service. Or just as we go forward here, all of your hourly rates and discounted rates across this would be the same amount of code through, with like the typo that Rob was just talking about. Yeah, I'll double check everything before we're finished, but it, it'll default to the cheap rate, with the exception of the, the website stuff. I'll do whatever the website says, what it said. Right. It would. I think. I think what we had talked about. Well, right now, it have to come out of contracted services. Um, but I think we would, we would try to look at putting a. I don't know if you want to call it a technical line item in there for just them kind of things. I don't know. That way, we can track what we're paying for that stuff. But I know that's a lot of work for Pat to get into the budget. Yeah, but it, through the clerk's office thing. Or? Oh yeah. Yeah. Through this would be the office. <coughs> Or we could take it out of the police station. Well, we, you know, <laughs> I do all the advice when I say that. <laughs> no, no, but we, it, 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 how it plays out. I mean, I can honestly tell you if it did, if all of a sudden we realized most of the money was being spent in the police department, of course we would budget more of the money out of the police department at that point. But right now it, it is available in the budget probably under clerk's contract and service. In, in any way you look at it, actually, when you go across, it's in the 101. And because we work off of a fund <coughs> budgeting, it doesn't really matter if it's out of Scott's, if it's out of Pat's, or where it may matter. It's still out of the 101. It's still out of the 101 account. True. But, okay. I, I'd make a motion that we accept Corey's contract for technical support for the village of Central Lake. Support. Motion by Bobby. Support by Bobby. <coughs> Any further discussion? <coughs> Pat, roll call. Saturday? Yes. Bodley? Yes. Chapman? Yes. Clark? Yes. Thayer? Yes. Tyler? Yep. Cruising? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. I'll read it down for you. All right. Um, I can't know if I'm going to wait for the other way. Yeah, let's do the contract for the wireless network installation. As you guys all remember, um, last month we had looked at wireless installs 
for the campground. Um, I stopped and talked with Corey and Mission Computers, and they wanted a chance to bid on this. Um, their bid came in, obviously, as everybody sees it there. It, for the wireless network support was $1,100 for the first year, $360 for the sequential years. That $1,100 is going to include the equipment and installation of the wireless network, which I believe is three omnidirectional antennas and a outdoor router system. It would be up to us to supply the power for the router and the omnidirectional antennas, but um, above that or beyond that, pretty much is all Corey. He's internet as well. Uh, pardon me? You provide the internet. Yes, we have to provide the internet as well through Charter, which we talked about. Everybody else has that contract also. Um, so I think that's a really good deal. Obviously, we have a large cost to setting up these things moving forward. Um, we talked also that on this, this deal, we have a splash splash page that uh, we can really manipulate to our advantage later where we can charge for um, advertising on it we can there's a lot of options for us to of moving forward here um, I think we're in the day and age where this is a good thing to have his Corey's quote came in again at eleven thousand for or eleven hundred dollars for the hookup three hundred and sixty for each additional Datacom Solutions out of Traverse City, their quote was, I've got to find it here, the initial $1,200 um, for the installation. And they're, they're, they're where they were calling a, pretty much it's a um, maintenance-free setup. Um, they just wanted to basically hook it up and walk away from it. And that... Again, was twelve hundred dollars with only two omnidirectional antennas and the router. They call it a turnkey installation on theirs. Um, Corey has <coughs> looked into if he gets this contract goes forward, he can remote manage that system also. Um, if it goes down, he'll get a a uh, alarm sent directly to himself for the maintenance of it. Um, he should be able to pretty much reset reboot anything from remotely for us. So if he's on the lake, on the north end of the lake and goes down, and he has his phone, he should be able to respond to it quickly. What makes it nice? He lives here. He's well, that was, business here, and that, yes. that gives us good communication. The only thing I didn't see on this, Corey, uh, and maybe you can help me, I'm not sure, is there's a minimum response time to problems. I know we've talked about that a little bit. We never did, we never did no. narrow it down. No, I can respond within 24 hours, whether or not something's fixed or not within 24 hours. This is a different story. But that just requires, yeah, our, it requires parts that have to be ordered. We have to, whatever the downtime is, is going to be downtime. With this omnidirectional network, there's three different antennas. If any one of them go down, the network remains. Um, if the main one that's the writing signal, the other two go down, we can move one of those in that spot. So you still end up with a network. The chances of all three of them going down at the same time would be unlikely. Um, there's a huge power surge of some sort that took out the whole system. You better cut all the trees down so they don't get hit. Anybody know a blogger? Let's talk about that in the next one. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just trying to help you with yeah. it. <laughs> See the concern. Maybe you could ricochet off of it. <laughs> Well, I think, I think in, and also with going with this, guys, we, we need to kind of look at the, the bigger picture. If we're going to do wireless, obviously we have to do internet, too, which is the charter's contract. Everybody should also have a copy of that, which with the charter contract at a 200, a 200 or for $200 a month, it's a 5 meg down and a 5 meg up rate. Again, um, according to Andrew with Charter, there's no contract on this. We can change it at our leisure. Um, it'd be $200 a month plus the installation cost for that. And that's, again, that's the 100 meg down, 5 meg up. We can drop that down to a 100 or a 50 meg down, 5 meg up for, I believe it was 130, 115 a month.
So I think if we're gonna if we're gonna pass one, we kind of got to do both of them. <laughs> Again, like uh, I had said last month, I also contacted Tempest Services out of Gaylor who, who didn't even want to get into the business of Wi-Fi and uh, campgrounds. I think if we're going with Wi-Fi, we probably don't have many options other than charter. Am I correct on that? It's, it's charter or... There's other options. They're much slower. Yeah, charters are the best. <clears throat> On number six, where you say support not to exceed one hour of service per month. That's all Can I assume that to mean 12 hours per year? <laughs> because the park is closed six months. Yes. I mean, I'm not, I'm just, it's a question that you do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think it's 12, 12 hours per year. Okay. After initial setup? After initial setup. <laughs> And it says additional support shall be built at a discount rate, and that will be the. If you guys said you want another omnidirectional antenna installed. No, but at, at what rate? Just because I look at it as a contract. Um, what are the 40 minutes? 45. 45. Okay, I mean, if you're just thinking, should. This state's a good one. No. On the next page, Ken. Go to your next page. No, oh, it's, I have 45. <laughs> oh, you missed it. Oh, we have this one hour parts of the three. Okay, it's there. I didn't see it. I fall. Okay. service in the park and mission computers bid for installation of the wireless rate points and water and the motion by Chapman support that mission computers contract for wireless support and charter business for internet provider. <clears throat> support by Batterby. Any other discussion? I just have one, and I know Joel will take care of it. Charter says this contract is not as accepted by Wednesday, January 23rd, 2013, so you'll make sure it still stays $200, right? Yes, yes, I, I will get back with that the cheaper one. one. What's that? Why aren't you going with the cheaper, the 135 a month? If they're camping, it don't have to be real fast. The 150? Well, what you end up with there, actually, yeah. is it's all in, it's not necessarily the speed of it, it's the amount of people you're going to have on it. And you're, you're absolutely right. At different months, we will drop down to the cheapest one. We'll probably start at the slower speed, and as we need, bump up to the, the larger speed. But if we don't approve going the larger, we're stuck at the lower. I'm all for stuck at the lower. We're on vacation. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm like, you know, most you guys are because right. a lot of the people that come up camping, and this, they, they're business owners, they really, and they, they can conduct their business while they're on vacation. And it, it's just because oh, they're making money. And, 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 and they go to the other parks because after, you know, I mean, they do, they, they request it. They want a Wi-Fi connection. And I honestly don't think it's for their kids to play on their computers or their games. A lot of it is from, from adults who want to be able to stay in touch with their business. Ells Ellsworth instituted uh, the Wi-Fi a little while ago, and, and they've had a huge response in their campground with it. Mm -hmm. And I agree with well. I'm all for it. We start off at the slower speed. And keep it there until somebody says something. 
I mean, I, I agree. Why would we automatically go for the 200? You can track all the use, and you'll know whether the slowest speed or lowest. I'll be able to see who, how the bandwidth is being used, how many, you know, right. it, it, what is going to happen is we'll, I'll set controls in there that won't give the whole pie to everybody, to one, or to one person. I'm going to set controls in there that will divvy out little pieces to people as they join. And that helps to control the, the flow. And the more people you have, the smaller piece of pie that we get. So you'll know, you'll advise us when it's time to bump it up. If it, if it comes to that. Absolutely. Okay. So the motion for the month is 200 a month? Or the lower? What do we have Not to, to exceed. I think, yeah. I think we agree we'll start with the lower. Not to exceed 200? Mm -hmm. we're, yeah, we're going to start at the lower, which would be 115 a month. But I don't think we want to wait for a, a council meeting mm -hmm. to bump up. So we're saying not to exceed 200 a month. So that way, if we have a bump up, it can be done internally. I'm, I'm right. sure if it becomes a problem, we'll hear from our park manager. I'm sure we will. Yeah. Oh, you know, cool. know what I'm saying? So if, if it's at the lower, the heat. It's at the lower speed yeah. and nobody's saying anything to Lyle, we're, we're going to stay there. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Well, I'm sure Lyle is something else. I grief. Lyle's in for a big surprise when he comes up with the chains. Any further discussion? Roll call. Yes. 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 Okay, guys, our next one is going to be our website support. Again, the website support was $576 per year at uh, extra hours purchased for $45 per hour. This is the one that I actually, I had Corey do this one up back when we first launched the website um, and, and move forward. <coughs> And so, I'm not necessarily sure that this at this time is is a huge bonus or benefit to us in cost. Um, we have most of our material on the, the website that we're going to put on there. And anything that we don't, even at a standard hour with Corey at $60 an hour, I'm not sure that we're going to spend more money. Um, so um, at this time, I think we should wait on the website to get. A little ironic that this is the mm -hmm. first one I had to work on and had to work the hardest to get. <laughs> it's also the one that you make the least amount of money on. Uh, and that, that would be my option would be to hold off on the website support right now. But if anybody else has a question, they want to, they think it should be. But you've been more involved in the website than me, so I'm going to just go with the recommendation. Denise, I, I, I would make a motion to table it. Okay. Motion by Batterby, support, support by Bobby to table the website support contract. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. <clears throat> Reservation system that we talked about, and Corey's done a lot of work on it, and he has it's all yours. Well, thank you. Um, I was asked to look in the website reservation system for the village, for the campground. 
Um, I've looked at three or four different options out there. There's actually there's a lot of bad campground reservation software out there. I mean, a lot of bad reservation software just in general. It's hard to use. It's confusing. It's um, it, it doesn't interface well with uh, online payments. Um, I narrowed down to three options. Um, from those three options, I talked to each company. Uh, this is the one that I decided to show tonight. Um, this is a, a company called Sunrise, and they they have a two-part system. First off, you, there's the online component. <coughs> customer that, that would be interested in accessing, uh, re reserving a, a campground site would be able to access it from our website. There would be a link to uh, to this page or a page similar to this one up here. I don't know if everybody can see that or not. But what this is is a, is a calendar. Thank you. Thanks. That was oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a calendar. So if a customer comes in and wants to reserve a series of days, they can select the days, they can say what type of site they want, and these are specified by us, so that you know, if you want a back-end site, um, and, oh, I might have to reload this, I'm sorry. Let's reload that. So this shows all the available sites that are, that are available the 11th through the 15th. We would have be able to choose by type of site if there were tent sites or back end site only sites. Like for instance, this label, these are labeled as back end only sites. If you had a, you, you can specify what kind of vehicle you have, or you type the length, because obviously these are different lengths. If you have any slide outs, and that didn't change, so that means that you can have a slide out. If you require a 20 amp service, and then you're able to choose a site, and you click on them and choose them from a list. It shows you the site that you would have, the, the estimate of how much it would cost. It will let you go ahead and continue. You type in information. Um, this is as a customer. And then you, should, you continue to fill it out. I don't know if it will let me do this with occupant. <coughs> What's nice with this system, too, I've looked at it quite a bit with Corey. Um, you almost can't mess it up. Uh, if you notice up in the upper left hand corner there, there's a red box. Basically, it's telling you you didn't do something, you got to complete it before you can move on. Uh, it also, if you get to the very end, and shut down without actually finishing it, it'll send you an email it that will. tells you you didn't finish your reservation. And it takes you from this screen, and apparently it's not letting you through. That goes on the computer, you have a file. Well, this actually will be a website that customers can oh. see. It, it'll link. But right. it will come into his computer. It will. This is the front end. This is what the customers will see. Okay. But there's a back end system. Okay. Let me refresh this to make sure we're still connected. This would be the back end of the system. Once the customer has gone ahead and reserved their campsite, this is what Lyle or anybody else would see if they logged in with us, uh, whoever was managing the site. The sites are all numbered and labeled. The days of the week are across the top. It shows you who's coming in and who's departing and when they're going to be there. It shows you 10 sites at a time, one through 10. And then you're able to just page through if you have multiple, you know, 11 through 20, and so on. You're able to see who's coming in, so I can click on this customer. He's checked in. I double click on him. It tells me information about him that's already been entered because he's already checked in, but it shows you the total of the reservation, the arrival date, the departure date, who's in. Uh, you can have address information, uh, what kind of trailer they have, what kind of vehicle they have, so that you don't have people, well, you have record of it anyway. Um, we'll go back here. It'll also, also show you via map, so you're able to click and see who's on. It's not going to let me do it on this demo. Um, you're able to create new reservations from this site. So this is the admin reservation. 
a, a Lyle or whoever's down there, um, if, or even during the off months, will be able to go here, create a new reservation, and type everything in. What that does by keeping re him keeping reservations here and the online site, they're synced together. So there's you'll see what's happening online. You'll be able to make your own reservations. Uh, anything that you may will show us taking online. And it'll show you the, from the back end here, it'll show you the current guest, who's staying where, how much they paid, if they owe any money, um, depending on how we have it set up. You can click on guests and find out information about them. The Schedule arrivals, you'll know how many people are due to come in and where they're, how many nights they have and how much they owe before they come in. Scheduled departures, you know who's leaving. Recent reservations online or in person. Recent invoices. What's nice about this too is we're now we're able to run reports. We're able to look at, I mean, there's, there's a million different reports here. Um, eight pages of reports. And we'll have to figure out which will be most useful, but you can look at all invoices over a certain date range. I'll guess with a certain tag. Um, if you want to know everybody that came in with four trucks, you can do that. You, um, all reservations on a particular site. Um, you can look at uh, uh, deposit reports. Um, and there's just an endless number. Once you have this information, we can shuffle it any way you want. It's a larger database that we just have to ask the right questions to get, get our answers. Um, let me see what else I've got here. Um, now, as far as cost goes, well, before I hit cost, there's also online training. So let's say somebody forgot how to check in a guest. Uh, I'll show this video because it's like a two minutes in the video. In this training video, we will show you how to create a new reservation. This is the new reservation screen. You can always get to this screen by clicking on the new reservation button. To start with, we'll select the arrival date and the departure date. search for a guest or you can create a guest. To create a guest, please select the create guest button. The only required fields in this window is the first and last name. Other fields are email, address, and phone number. To create, click the create button. Once we have our guest, we can select a membership that applies to their reservation. <coughs> we can add occupancy, and we can also add RV for an additional vehicle. In this screen, there is no required field.
kind of showed how easy it was. Um, I actually spoke with a woman out of Maine uh, that owns a campground that's implementing this software. They're switching from a different uh, a different company, actually one of them that I had looked at for, for Central Aid. And it was much more complicated, uh, harder to use, and they charge higher rates. Uh, she said her favorite thing about this uh, this particular one is the ease of use, but it also, when they book a reservation, it gives them a confirmation email a few days before. I imagine we'd set that up. It gives them a reminder email that they're there set the <coughs> reservation. And then uh, after they check out, it says, sends them a thank you email. So what that does is that helps with customer retention. That gets you maybe another reservation next year or later on in the summer by, by having that reminder. And you could put coupons in those emails. You could say, you know, don't forget, you know, Bachman's has got a special going on this week or, you know, however you wanted to do it. Um, but that is that's something that's really not advertised well on this, but it's something that this software does as well. Um, this is a whole system, so this would be the only way you take reservations would be through this particular system. Otherwise, you defeat the purpose of it. Um, it does require you to have credit card processing, which I'm not aware that the village it currently has. Um, I talk, talked with this company, put actually at length, uh, spoke to the president of the, of the uh, Sunrise, and they recommend one of three. And out of those three, they lean strongly towards one called JetPay. And I, I contacted JetPay. And I do have a rate sheet, which I believe really Joe has. Yeah. Corey, are you done with this presentation at the current time? Um, so I'm going to kick the light down to go over the pay scales and stuff like that. Well, I can cost. show, I was going to show taking a credit card, too. Okay. Because one, one of the things with the credit cards is you'd actually have to have a machine. There, there'd be a little USB device that would plug into the computer um, that would allow you to take cards. And it's actually fairly simple. I was going to show just so that... I think this is like 30 seconds, 45 seconds. So this would be the entire credit card processing for the campground. You wouldn't have two different systems. You wouldn't have a separate machine that you would swipe and have to balance against an online payment. Uh, so that's all I needed for the for the video portion of it. Vicky, would you turn that mic back on, please? Thank you. Corey, is there is there any credit card that's limited in the jet pay? Um, discover I mean, today pretty much except except all of them. Everything except uh, American Express is a little bit more expensive. Uh, guys, I would have got some more copies. I just got it this afternoon also, and I actually forgot to make copies in the office over there. Corey, can they pay online ahead of time and show up and not have to bother Lyle? Or do yes. I'll have to go through Lyle. Oh, I like it's all on the code to set it up. Okay. He's still going to have to check in. I check in, but I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. As far as swiping credit cards, my recommendation would be to have the paper pay in full online. So you don't, don't, don't do deposits, don't do anything. <laughs> And I also recommend, because there's a, there's a cost to this service, and, and an attempt to recoup some of the cost of this service, um, charge a convenience fee online. And not, not a large amount, $5 just per reservation. That helps to recoup the cost, because they, they do charge, um, there's a $79 fee per month for the system. There's a $3.50 per um, reservation taken online. So if you charge $5 per online reservation, it'll help you do that cost. Now, we're only open for six months of the year, so it wouldn't be, we'd only be $79 for six months, right? No, but actually a full year. You want to take reservations and all Oh, yeah, we would. That's right. Okay. And another thing I found quite interesting in talking to the woman in Maine was most of the reservations were made between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. Really? 
So really? Yeah, that's what she told me. That's what that's what she's seen on her end. Oh my. Well, so obviously nobody's gonna be calling at that hour or at least answering the phone. Do they, did she mention when they have a, a time I when they when the day starts or when the day ends? You know, I didn't get into that weather, but she said that uh, she would have to answer any questions. It's a check-in, a check-in time, and the leaving time has got to be also set. Well, what this company will do is they will they will send a hand-down packet with all that information, requesting all that information. They've done this before for many different campgrounds, um, so they they know the ins and outs and the check-out times and, and and how to uh, and how to set things up. Corey, a couple of quick questions. Um, Ken just pointed out to me. There's a there's a monthly minimum fee of twenty five dollars for the jet pay. Well, I negotiate on behalf of the village, and they will waive that because we're only using six months out of the year. Okay. Um, well, that's great because there's also a debit card tra transaction fee of point one uh, fifteen cents actually. Uh, 15 and and there and a monthly of two dollars and fifty cents, and there's also a ACH fee. Of twelve ninety five. Those are all optional. Uh, you can choose not to accept debit cards. Okay. Um, you do want to do the get reporting. I talked to uh, I wish I remember his name, Tyler, Mr. Tyler, um, at great length this afternoon after I'd spoken uh, after I gave you that call. Um, he said that you do want that two dollar fifty cent fee monthly from getreporting.com. What that does is if you ever have to dispute a charge, they, that's a line item everything that's been purchased. So he says that they, for $2.50 a month, it's, it's a way that you can kind of protect yourself. Um, the automatic clearinghouse rates and fees, that automatic clearinghouse has to do with checks. If you want to make sure the check that somebody is writing you is good, you can choose not to accept checks, first off. But if you want to choose, you can choose to purchase their service. That is an extra add-on. And what that allows you to do is type in the routing number and the uh, check number, and it will uh, authorize that check if there's funds in the, the account. If there's not funds in the account, that's declined, and you don't take the check. Uh, monthly access is $12.95. I asked him about that. What, what that has to do with was they take on all the PCI compliance issues. They don't, they don't pass that on to you. They have an insurance policy of type uh, of sorts that helps to protect you against getting bad checks and bad credit cards. So that's what the, the monthly access is. Uh, and we can speak with them again if there's more questions. 